and welcome to this Paul Nichols National Hunt preview show brought to you by, of course, Betfair. And it's a special edition because I'm joined by Paul Nichols, champion trainer on the line, and we're going to be rattling through, talking about his stable stars for the forthcoming season, some of the new recruits as well, some talking points along the way. Uh, Paul, I'm very much looking forward to this. How are you, first and foremost? Yeah, yeah, good. Very good order. Yeah, good summer. Looking forward to the next few days, a few runners, possibly Chepstow. Uh, a couple at Worcester today, so it's all starting to crank up a little bit now. So how many can we get enough rain? And we'll be yeah. all busy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a real sense now with obviously the arc behind us, Champions mm. Day still to go on the flat, but the jump season really is going to start uh, notching up a few gears. And what, what's the mood like in camp at the moment? I, pre I presume the yard is full to capacity at this point. Yeah, we're full up. We've got 150 odd in work. Um, the ones that we've sort of planned to run early-ish that want better ground, uh, we'll, we'll know the next few days, I'd say are fairly ready. Everyone's looking forward to the new season. Obviously, you know, it's uh, a lot in front of us. Um, everyone's working hard and the weather's been kind to everyone. As, as you imagine, that makes life a little bit easier. Not so good for running plans, but it's been, you know, lovely time for training the horses really and all the staff are happy. So, yeah, great excitement and anticipation for what's ahead. And obviously the summer to reflect a little bit on last year, uh, the Trainers' Championship and how the season went as a whole. What reflections have you made from the last season and any changes have been sort of implemented this summer at all, if any? Uh, it, the nor you know, you, normal things during the summer, you're always um, maintaining your gallops, trying to improve things, different surfaces. Uh, you know, we're busy steam cleaning, disinfecting all the boxes. We give both of the two yards 28 days empty without a horse in them, full of fresh air. Um, just things that are normal routine. Um, as you know, one of the big changes this year is Harry Durham's no longer with us and Charlie Davis is taking his place as assistant mm -hmm. trainer. That's exciting. Charlie's sort of shadowed Harry for the last five years and, um, you know, he's got a big future in front of him and we're very happy with him. So it's exciting times for him. I was going to ask about that. Obviously, the assistant trainer is in a really important role. Harry knew the way you worked like the back of his own hand. But it sounds like Charlie was well, very well positioned to step into Harry's role. It's not sort of just he's not just come out the blue, clearly. No, we all, you, you know, mm -hmm. you always have a succession of, of people, you know, that follow on from Dan Skelton, Harry Fry, Tom Jonathan, and Harry, and then Charlie. You always know that they're going to, you know, I actually thought Harry'd end up staying with us a lot longer than he, he, he has done. And um, Charlie would probably have five or six years as pupil, but Harry decided to go off on his own. Um, and Charlie was just ready to drop into that role. So, um, yeah, he's very good. It's been seamless. Um, and you know, staff wise, we've got a great team here, as good a team as we've probably ever had. And, um, you know, everyone's excited about the season ahead. And, you know, we're wish, wishing Charlie all the best, absolutely. And jockey wise, um, presume it'll be the usual Harry, obviously, at the forefront of proceedings. Um, how is he coming into this season? Yeah, you know, he's ridden a few winners. We haven't been that busy. We've had, well, we always try and have 20 winners by the first October, we've had 21, so that's normal. Um, He's, he's really excited about the season ahead and getting going. Then Brian and Lorcan will probably share the number two role. Uh, Lorcan's been riding very, very well. He deserves a few more chances. And Brian is now back fit, having had that very nasty accident. Um, and then we've got some very good claimers, Tom Buckley and Angus Gillida, who've, who've ridden for us mm -hmm. before. And two new young lads that have joined us, really. Uh, Chris Gordon's son, Freddie. Um, oh, he's yeah. come on as amateur. And Freddie Gingell, um, you know, um, whose who's granddad is Colin Tizard. Um, he did very well pony racing point to point, and he's turned 16. He's just got his conditional license. So, you know, good team of young jockeys, which you always need. Oh, sounds exciting. Yeah, because, you know, it's always the way, isn't it? You can't just have the main man. You've got to have all those ones backing up and, you know, plenty of options for you. So that's an exciting jockey team. Um, obviously, we're going to get stuck into the horses in more details, but um, a few sort of higher profile retirements. But I suppose we want to focus on the future. And so in terms of the new recruits, are we talking, have they come from the usual sources in terms of France, bit of point to pointing off the flat, sort of where has the focus been for the the new recruits everywhere really we've got some <laughs> new french horses we bought a lot of nice three-year-old stores i think we've got 24 or 5 uh unraced four-year-olds that we bought last year stores are already to run in bumpers half a dozen horses four-year-olds at one point to points in ireland in the spring 
um for all different sources you know we got i reckon we probably got 50 horses on the list that haven't run for us before wow. so we've had quite a big clear out got a lot of new exciting horses but you know they're not going to be instant action a lot of those are for the future but you need to keep your t- team ticking over and, and invest for the future and try and build on the future so that's what we've been doing Absolutely. Well, let's crack on then and talk about a couple of the more well-known names uh, in our first section of this preview. We're going to focus in on the chasers, the open division, the older horses, and where better place to start than Brave Man's game, Paul. Um, Obviously, stepping up into open company this season after last year, which just what are your reflections on how his season ended up last last year? It started well and didn't end up quite so good. Um, But... um... Yeah, and he won very well. He won the grade one at, at, at Kempton over Christmas, and that's going to be his target this year. The King George, obviously, he's going to be a lot more competitive, um, but he's in good shape now. He's always just had a few little issues with his breathing, um, and on soft ground round at stiff track at Cheltenham would have got to bottom, and that's why I wasn't that keen on running him. He's had his palate recauterized this summer. Uh, I'd say he looks as big and well as he probably ever has done. Um, he's a big, strong horse. He's always going to take time to mature, and always probably better off when he's eight, nine, ten. He's just that, just that big sort of horse. So we're happy that he's improved. He looks great. Um, it's hindsight. I think oh, I wish I had probably run him at Cheltenham and had him in the two and a half mile as it turned out. But yeah, hindsight's a wonderful thing. We didn't, re- or none of us knew we were going to get as much rain as was forecast. And he was probably over the top at entry, though he didn't run at Cheltenham. He he was ready for his life that day. And obviously, he trained him quite hard to get mm-hmm. him ready. And though, and he turned up and he was in the pack. He nearly had a run, if you know what I mean. He was never quite right afterwards and didn't perform at entry. So I put a line through that. And we just hope we get back to his best now. He, he seems really well. I, I don't know quite definitely. It's not set in stone where he's going to start. He could go for the Charlie Hall. Um, the week after at Sandown, Grand Permitting, there's that three-mile intermediate chase, which mean would probably be a small field and might be a nice stepping stone for um, Kempton. Or there's the two-and-a-half or two-mile five they have at Ascot at the, at the end of um November. So we're really thinking uh, our focus is on the King George one run somewhere beforehand, and that will be ground dependent and when we're happy with him. So I suspect at the moment it'll either be the Charlie Hall or Sandown. That's what we're thinking. I mean, you're no better man for a sort of target trainer. And, you know, how often we've seen you just put one date in the diary mm. for the season and that be the be all and end all. Yeah. For, for you, this season is the King George yeah. absolutely brave man's games big day out. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he, he, the track suits him. It's an easy three miles. Well, it's not an easy three miles. You've got to stay around there. Uh, he showed he performed. I mean, I think, and then after that, we can build on that. There's, we were always the same with Corto and all those other horses. You win the King George and then you make a plan afterwards. But to me, that is his perfect race. Um, so that's where we've got the target. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to leave a lot to work on from his first run up until Kempton. But um, yeah, we're, we're excited about that. And then we'll make a plan after everyone keeps asking, well, will he win the Gold Cup? Will he go here? To be honest with you, let's get Kempton out of the way and then we can make a plan. You know, you have to question whether he is a real dour three and a quarter mile stay and mm. chaser, whether he's got a lot of speed. He jumps well. Kempton suits him very well. And like, you know, I've had plenty of horses like Clanders of Own. Sylvan Oka Conti were fantastic around Kempton and Aintree and places like that. We're never quite so good at Cheltenham. So who knows? We'll find that out in the future. Yeah, clearly Kempton Boxing Day is the mm. one for Brave yeah. Man's Game. Now, if we're talking about sort of targeting a race with a horse, what a job you did with Frodon last year, obviously taking him to, ta- to Down Royal at the start of the season and him winning there. And, you know, it was very clear. You made it very clear from the outset that that was that horse's it might have been an early target, but you really had him ready to run for his life that day. Are we expecting the same from Frodo on this season at Down Royal? Well, I hope so. I came in on the 1st of July. We've we've cracked on with him. We know full well he's not going to win a gold cup or anything like that. And he'll beat those better horses when they're at the best. But, you know, along the way, like last year, perhaps they're not going to be quite so ready as he was, which worked out. And that was probably his gold cup last season. And to me, the same thing, uh, depending on what turns up. He'll be ready for his life. I mean, he's working nicely. Um, he was just funny enough at Kempton and in the spring. He was just, he was, he, he's always had a little issue with his breathing. He was, ch- Brian is, kept saying he, he's, he's choking again, which, you know, hadn't done for 18 months or so. So we've recorderized his palate, which often with those older horses, you do every two, every second yeah. season. That seems to have improved him a little bit. Um, but yeah, he, he's going to have an away day next week. Haven't decided quite where. Probably be Lambourne because we won't be going on race courses away at the moment, which is what we did last year. And um, and then go to Dan Royal at the end of the month. So yeah, he's well on schedule for that. 
That's another. He, he provided a great day, didn't he? I don't think you were there at Downwell Wee Paul, but I mean, no. he got a great reception, didn't he? Yeah, well, I was. I think I was. I usually go to Weatherby that day for the Charlie Hall, and there's also Ascot. So we'll just see what happens. Who's running where? Um, and um, decide. But I'd love to go to Down Royal. I've won that race a number of times, and um, it's been very kind to us. So the great people, great track. So we're looking forward to sending them out there. Yeah, it could be another terrific day. I'll look forward to that if he gets there. Fingers crossed he does. Um, let's move on to Grenatine over the two miles, of course, and he finished off last season winning at his beloved Sandown. Why does Sandown suit this horse so well? I, I don't know. He just loves it around there. He's got such a lot of jumping ability. He 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 goes a good gallop. They go fast around there. And, you know, he's won two celebration chairs, I think, now, and he's won the Tingle Creek. Um, he, he just loves it. And I think his last performance at Sandown in April was probably as good a performance as he's ever put up around there. He he was very good. He just seems to keep improving. And I, I probably shouldn't have run him at Kempton afterwards last year. Uh, that was a little bit too soon. We won't be doing that again this year. He's definitely okay. slightly better on better ground. So the idea is hold and gold cup like we did last year. Um, I'd say slightly more forward this year than he was last year before that. But he always just steps up a gear for the run. I think we always targeted the Tingle Creek last year after the Holden Gold Cup. And I think quite a lot of people were surprised he improved so much from one run to the Tingle Creek. But he's that type of horse who will do that. So same again, off to Sandown, which he loves. And then after that, we have to then sort of think about it a little bit, what we do. It might well be, I, I don't want to run him on too deep a ground. He actually hated Leopardstown when it was to testing. So we might then leave him to the spring. You never know. He might end up running the game spirit, champion chase, and then Sandown. We'll just see. Um, he ran very well in the champion chase two years ago. He's only beat two lengths. Mm. Um, and if he's improved, it would put him in the mix. But that's obviously a hard race to win. Sandown suits him well. And if you ended up winning a Tingle Creek and a celebration chase at the end of the season with him and some good runs in between, you'd all be very happy. And that's an excellent season. No getting away from yeah. that. Um, can I just ask you as a slight diversion here? Just he was one of the two horses that didn't fire at the Dublin Racing Festival. Mm. You've touched upon the ground there mm. for him. Um, is, is the Dublin Racing Festival back on? Is is it still in your calendar as a as a uh, focus um, point? Or yeah, did last year sort of slightly scar you a little bit? If, if you've got the right horse, I think. Uh, we thought Le Leopard's Town is normally um Decent ground. And over Christmas last year, I think it was decent ground. So we mm. thought, oh, that'd be worth both that throw on and him going out there. And then I think because they'd had a dry spell, they didn't put a lot of water on up the week up to the meeting. And then of course, what happens is it does the it poured with rain on the day he was run. And it was just too deep for him. And he also um I don't know whether that happened in the race, whether he got a lump of mud, hit him in the eye. He came back with a nasty injury to his eye. So he spent a month after that. Uh, at the vets so he would never that's why we didn't go to Cheltenham with him so yeah. that day just didn't work out for either horse and um, to be honest with you I'm, if you've got the right horse to go to those races we've done well to start thinking for us to go over there stepping stones for Cheltenham or whatever else probably is an idea we've got some good races in this country and I like supporting to be honest with you the, the home fix of the races at home so that's probably what we'll be doing Absolutely. Team home fixtures. I yeah. like well, that. The horses, the Irish horses are hard enough to beat at Cheltenham without trying <laughs> yeah. to beat them out in Ireland. But yeah, exactly. yeah, we, we have great success in Ireland. I, I love going out there with the horse. It's going to be the right horse, the right time. And he might be better off to have a, a run less and pick him for some better ground and go and run him in February on deep ground. Mm. Yeah, no, I can see that angle. And Frodon's sure. the same. Frodon's exactly the same. We won't be doing that again. Okay. Um, Hitman. I really want to get stuck into this horse because I know from talking to you from seasons gone by that this is a horse you're very fond of. I think you, you do you believe that he has got more in his locker than he's currently shown us, specifically last season where he was a little bit in no man's land, I felt. Yeah, um, look, he's a six-year-old. Actually, he achieved more at his age than both Clan Desabo and Frodon actually did. <laughs> and funny enough, they look at you know they were okay at that at that time of their life six seven they ran some solid good races and all of a sudden raised it to another level when they sort of matured and I think he's going to be the same he's only just six his best run last year was the Grade One Aintree when he was beat by Facadaderas he's struggled with his breathing for the last year so he's had a full operation on his breathing which I think will help him I think right. time will help him and he wants to step up and trip so I looked the other day and when uh, uh, Frodon started his sort of good run in improving he won the old roan off a mark of one hundred and sixty. And Fro and Hitman is now 159. So they're on a similar sort of par at that same stage of their life. So we may end up running him in the old Roan uh, if he's ready. If, if he didn't go there, there's a graduation chase at Kempton. I think a 50,000, I'm sorry, at Haydock, a 50,000 man graduation chase on Betfair Chase Day. The Brave Man's Game won last year. He, 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 he'll head for that race. That's a very valuable race. He will have an entry for the King George as well. But okay. I, I think there's more to come from him over a trip. But we'll okay. see. 
So we're we're looking for him stepping up in yeah. trip at this stage. Yeah. Um. What about three under three five? Obviously, he was unbeaten until Cheltenham yeah. last year, then beaten at Cheltenham. But uh, is 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 he ground dependent in terms of needing it to be on the better side? I think he's quite flexible, to be honest with you. He had a good run last year. He's a tough, genuine horse. He galloped and jumped. And, you know, some of those novice chases for a horse like him that jump and gallop, you can run up a sequence, which he did. And obviously found it altogether tougher in the um, RSA, or whatever, you know, the three mile at Cheltenham and the novice. Um, I was sort of trying my best to persuade the connections to run him in the three mile six, because uh, I thought he'd have a stronger chance than that. But anyway, he still ran a solid race, but I'm not convinced three miles around Cheltenham suits him. He probably wants a stiffer test of stamina. Uh, he will have one run somewhere, possibly even over hurdles at Weatherby, or again, he's eligible for that intermediate chase at Sandown en route to the Coral Gold Cup at um, Newbury, which I thought was a route. Second season novice would suit him very nicely. Okay, interesting. And he, he's, I mean, I've seen him in the flesh a couple of times. He's not your sort of typical staying chaser, is he? He's sort of, he, is he a little bit smaller? No, he's, you know, he's, he's fine because he's actually done well. I'd say he looks as well as he's ever looked. Again, a lot of these horses just need that bit of time to mature and if he can just keep on improving. Then, you know, hopefully there's some improvement to come. But, you know, a horse like that who's rated where he is and having won four or five, that's your life gets tough this year. They've got to go in those big competitive races. So, um, yeah, it'll be tough for him, but I think he's up to it. Okay, okay, positive. Oh, I hope update. he's up to it anyway. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, he, he might be one that you never know could run in like the the Warwick uh, three mile five they have after Christmas Warwick Classic. Those type of races, Welsh Nationals, uh, though, as you said, he probably doesn't want it too too heavy. But he, he's he's a fun horse to have about. That win plenty of races. Yeah, something to look forward to for his connections for sure. Let's move on to the novice chasers now, uh, and we'll kick off with Mon Morale, who's I presume going novice chasing and just. Reflections on last season for him, please, because I think it would have been long odds on when he finished his juvenile season at the, at the start of last year that he would have gone a whole campaign last season without actually winning a race. I do know it's hard for those horses in that second season when they're out of juveniles, they're going to take on the older horses, basically level weights, so they don't get any weight advantage yeah. at all. And it's a tough season, always has been. Um, we fancy him to run well in the um, fight of fifth beat, suddenly got struck into early on at the second hurdle. And actually, it was a nastier injury than we thought. And he actually spent a month at the vets afterwards. He did a great job, actually, and could have easily ended up fatal. He had a really nasty injury. That got sorted out. He was fine. Then we were put on the back foot a little bit. So we went to Fontwell. He ran a bit fresh, needed the run a little bit, and then ran very well at Aintree. Um, I think to only have had three runs and not had a hard time training or racing would probably be a blessing in disguise. Now he's five years old ready to go novice chasing, which is always what we've really bought him for. So, yeah, he'll be novice chasing months' time, I'd say, probably when there's some nice cut in the ground, start him at two miles, stiff two miles, somewhere like an accident, and then see where we go. Have you given him a school already, I presume? Well, he's always ever been jumping baby fences. Okay. Um, or That's all we ever do, really. Um, he's done lots of schooling. With the conditions as they are, we haven't been able to school on grass yet. That'll ha that'll change, hopefully, in a month's time. But I don't see his jumping being a problem. You know, he's, he, he's run around no toys, jumped really well in this country. He's very good and slick. And, um, you know, we picked the right track to start with. I, I wouldn't have to be honest. I wouldn't worry about what track he goes. He'll be fine. Are you, would he, would you, I mean, we've, we've got a few other names to talk mm. about in terms of the novice chasing mm. division. Is he the horse you're most excited about going novice chasing this season? Well, ultimately being so successful as he was as a juvenile and looking so classy. Yeah, he, he's probably the highest rated of those horses. Well, I don't actually, but fabulous probably is. But, you know, he's a young horse. He's a five-year-old. He was bought to make a chaser. So, yeah, of course, we're extremely excited about him. I, to be honest with you, what trip he wants, I don't really know. I thought he was slow and wanted a trip. And last year, he showed us he had plenty of speed. So we might start at two miles and see where we go from there. If he jumps really good and solid and quick, two miles might be ideal to start with. OK, so he's going to have, it sounds like he's going to have options, maybe be quite yeah. versatile. In terms of, obviously, you touched upon the injury there. I always think with, you know, horses, an injury like that, that sounds like it could have been quite severe mm. or it was, it was quite severe and it could have been even worse. You know, that really does put you on the back foot for the, the rest of the season, yeah. doesn't it? But it did with him. It did with him. But actually, I, I quietly, I was sort of, once we knew he was going to be OK, I wasn't bothered really because, I, you know, he didn't want to be chasing around over hurdles against those grade one horses, which he wasn't going to beat over hurdles. You know, he's not a specialist hurdler. He's bought as a chaser. So a light season's probably done him good, to be honest with you. That's how I see it. Yeah, like you said, blessing in the And he's in, in great disguise. shape now, that's the thing. 
Yeah, potentially blessing in disguise. What about Silent Revolution? He's also had quite a light campaign last season and then was yeah. shoved in the deep end in the champion hurdle. What what sort of horse is he? Um, I wish he'd been good enough in the champion hurdle. It was a supreme he actually ran sorry, him. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but he was just as a mad an idea. It was just look, he 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 won first time at Newbury, won really nicely, and then he, he threw a splint and we never got him back until just before Chartland and Column his own. He just said, Look, I'm going to Chartland, let, let him have a run right now. Whatever happens, you'll learn something. I think Harry said he'd never been so fast over five fences in his life. Um <laughs> and looked after and came back. We went to Chepstow three weeks later and made all in one. Um, he won two bumpers. He's a nice horse. He's rated, I think, 136 off the top of my. I wouldn't surprise me. He ended up one day being a 150 plus chaser. He's a lovely horse and he's ready to make his debut over fences now. And I think he's one who could be like, so Granatine, when Granatine first ran over fences, I'm right in saying he ran in a novice handicap chaser, Ascot off 132 to six year old. Look where he is now. Horses like that can improve. And I'm just hopeful that he will be one of those. He's another one like in similar styles, I suppose, in a way to more morale in the sense yeah. of, you know, had a very light campaign and, you know, has very few miles on the clock, really. It, you know, sometimes when those horses get injured, I do say to the owners, well, actually it hasn't done them any harm. They've had some time, which they don't often get. Going back all those years to when Corto got injured when he fell at that exit of that day, remember, he, he really remounted him. He got beat ahead after falling to out. He missed the rest of the season. And I think that was the best thing ever happened to him because he had some time to mature. And I think any horse like Mon Morale or like Silent Revolution, like campaigns, will benefit them in the future. OK, um, one horse who kind of has the opposite profile, I guess, in the sense of uh, we've seen plenty of him is Muck Fabulous. You've already mentioned yeah. uh, just a few minutes ago, had a few seasons hurdling now at the age of eight going jumping. Yeah. What, what's the theory here? Well, he, he never really he, he he never really took to jump. It took a while to get his confidence jumping hurdles. He got beat the first day and then he was a bit of a disaster over a couple of runs but actually ended up being quite good because he got well handicapped and ended up winning the e bear final at sandown which was a, <laughs> at kempton it was a, a so that was a, a plus and once he got better and better he then won a rail kill and one thing another but I, he was supposed to have gone novice chasing last october then he got an injury at home right um which meant we were back until january before he was fit to run and then i was thinking well what do we do now it's getting late enough there's some good novice chases about let's just give him a couple more runs over hurdles get a bit more experience and chase now it doesn't matter whether he's eight seven or nine to be honest with you and i think there's a few extra runs have done him good he jumped better than he ever jumped towards the end and he's learned a lot so you know he might be eight years old but that's no problem he's ready to go chasing now and hopefully he'll be very good and he has an entry this weekend doesn't he yeah, he's in at Chepstow on Saturday. I was always he's won there twice at that meeting. He loves good ground, uh, as you know. They're calling the ground good to firm, good in places. There is some rain forecast, so I'm going to take a good look at the ground tomorrow. And if it's safe, he'll run because he needs experience. And it's a good race as a stepping stone for the Rising Stars novice chase at Wincanton on the fifth of November, which we always like going to. And we've always started the good horses in that race at Chepstow, but the ground will have to be safe for me to run him. Okay, so little word of course. Just have there, a little but... concern, yeah. Yeah, God, fingers crossed we get some rain. Hey, Needs yeah, a, yeah, we, a do. Week of, we do a week of a down. I see Wing Canton's already cancelled next next Thursday meeting for the Grand Beer Hard. That's worrying when they've just got you know, 5th of November is not that far away before they have the big meeting. So let's hope it does rain. Yeah, it's really, it's going to come around so quickly yeah. and the weeks go by. But anyway, fingers crossed on the weather I mean, front. Some of these horses, you know, if we're going to get seasons like this and it goes on like this forever, we're going to have to get adapt to running on some better ground because otherwise they'll ever end up never running. And I'm never afraid to run them on ground that might be a bit quicker than we probably want to, as long as they're very fit and you know that they will, you know, will cope with it. But otherwise you'll end up leaving horses in stables for a long, long time and not running. It just seems to be the way the weather's going that, we're going to have to get used to running on better ground as long as it's safe. Yeah, safe. And if, like you say, they're fit enough to run, yeah, then... They've got to be fit. Yeah. Um, Jolino Bello, another one in the novice yeah. chasing division, obviously finished off last season with the grade one at Aintree when stepped up in trip. What what mm. do you see his likely targets as? Well, three miles, um, you know, novice chasing. Um, he, he's a lovely horse, just kept on improving. He ran well at Channel twice, got beat by a very good horse twice, over three. He wasn't really getting that trip early in the season. Towards the end of the season, he still matured. He got the trip well at Aintree, stayed on very well. Missed Charlton purposely to go to, to Aintree, which was a good plan. Um, he's done well physically over the summer. And novice chasing now, obviously. Um, I, I could have entered him at Chepstow on Friday, but with the ground as it is, I didn't even bother entering him. Um, he could start anywhere between two miles six and... Um, 
three miles. So I, I, I've sort of there's a nice novice three three mile novice here. So Weatherby at the Charlie Hall meeting, uh, the Holden Golf Cup meeting, fourth of November at Exeter. There's a three mile novice chase there. So those are sort of what I've got in mind, and then perhaps Stepping Stone on to Newbury, and then possibly Kempton, where you never know, you might meet McFabulous, but we'll, we'll just see. But um, I'd say he wants three miles, yeah. Okay, and it sounds like he's quite forward. If you were thinking of running him this weekend, if that was even a yeah, he's he's quite a, he's not a big heavy horse. He doesn't take a lot of work. He's 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 pretty well ready as soon as we get some ground. Okay, uh, and tell us about Stage Star then, the final novice chaser to discuss. Obviously, he won the Chalo and again at Exeter last year uh last season but then had a, a muddling spring campaign how what yeah, just expand it, on that a little bit well that mirrored that mirrored um really uh brave man's game in a lot of ways he was ready yeah. for Cheltenham he, he actually it struggled with his breathing quite a lot last year so he's had a breathing operation and you keep saying it, all the good horses end up having their breathing tweaked at some stage you know, we've always been of the philosophy and I've taught Dan this and you'll see Dan follows me and that if you've got mm-hmm. a breathing problem it's something it's not like a tendon problem something like your time you can actually deal with it and sort it out so he had a is an op in the summer which I think will improve him um that's why I didn't run him at Exeter that day in the spring when it was very heavy I knew he'd struggle a bit. And then, of course, of course, when it went to your channel, um, that's what made me sort of not run Brave Man's game. And Harry said it, on him, it felt like the ground was heavy. So yes. he wants slightly better ground. Um, and he's ready to go novice chasing now. Um, looks well. He's scored well. He probably is, unlike the others want three, he's probably wants to start at two and a half, two five, something like that. Again, he's a shallow winner. He could be anything. So, you know, exciting horse. And it's nice to have some exciting novice chasers. You know, you know, I love winning those type of races. The hardest thing is finding enough races for them to run in. Paul, you love winning any sort of races, yeah. Well, really. Yeah, exactly. But the novice chasers <laughs> of the future always have been, in my mind, you know, they're the future. You know, that's where you're going to get your next generation of star chasers from. Yeah, and the, like with Stage Start, just finally on him, when he won the Chalo, I didn't get the impression he was a horse that... I Am I right in saying he might have been the horse that somewhat surprised you a little bit in terms of winning that race? And yeah, yeah he, he did really because you know he was a nice bumper horse, but he, he he got beat by in the Grade Two at Entry by Napper's Hill, um, and he ran okay, and he ran okay on his debut over hurdles last year at Chepstow. He won quite nice. He just kept on improving, and I, I still think there's more to come from him yet. So hopefully the chasing will bring out the best of him. But it's like with all these three or four or five six we've been talking about, it's all about jumping. If they jump well that'd go a long way. If they don't jump, or they're not as good at jumping. That sort of holds you up a fraction. So hopefully they'll all jump well and fulfil their potential. I mean, at this stage, you touched on it because of the rain issue, et cetera, mm. et cetera. You know, they're all spinning around that school mm. of yours, jumping those sort of baby brush fences. Mm. I mean, I presume with the regularity you're doing that with, it's pretty rare that one doesn't cop on and start jumping pretty well, really, surely. Yeah. No, and not just that. You probably haven't seen. We've got a, a, a four hundred meter uh, sand loop as well, which we do a lot of school on. So we put two plastic style French fences on both sides. One of them an open ditch so on a school in morning. Okay. They probably jump thirty two fences. Wow. All of these have done that and, and jump very well. So they do do a lot and they get lots of practice. I think the problem being is that the odd one, like fabulous, worries me a bit. They can be a bit too brave and a bit stepping, go and frighten themselves. And then they lose their confidence and don't jump as well because they're a bit too brave. That's the biggest issue with some of those novice chasers. But, you know, they'll have all done plenty of jumping for a long time, so they should be more than fine to, to do so. Yeah, that's what we've come to expect from your novice chasers mm. for sure. Um, let's talk about novice hurdlers then. A uh, few names I've been given, a sort of list of a few names to talk about. Like you said, you sound like you've got plenty of new recruits. So these are just the five names we're going to roll with yeah. for the time being. Uh, starting off with Hermes Allen, a £350,000 point-to-point purchase. Tell us about him. Um, well, I wasn't at the sale that day. I was delighted when Mr. Hales said that uh, Aidan Murphy had bought the horse for him and um, John had got his pals, Jed and Alec and everybody involved in it. He's a polyglot point-to-pointer. He was third on his debut and then he won. Um, he was too backward to run in the spring. Um, but he's ready to go now. A very nice horse, not the biggest in the world. Um, whether he's worth 350 grand, who knows? You never know with those sort of horses, but I was obviously delighted to be sent him. Don't know I mean, a lot like him, I don't really know enough about. It's funny, you know, when we go back to all those years ago when I had Denman, before we first run him at Wing Canton, I basically told Paul Barber it was a waste of time running him over hurdles because he had no chance. He showed nothing at home, absolutely nothing at home. <laughs> Went on the track and won the first time okay and then just kept on improving. And a lot of these type of horses like him are in that mould. They're, they're not what I call morning glories at home. They're gallopers and they're going to, we'll know what we got once we've run them. 
So isn't that the excitement of the game? It Paul? is. It is. <laughs> That's what it. So you you know got all these horses. You just don't know at home. You know what they are. So he's ready to make his debut. I'd say in a couple of weeks' time. Does everything nice. He jumps well and ready to go. I mean, you have uh, lots of trainers sort of have a very specific type of horse that they like. But for, for you, I always think with you, like you get the French recruits, you get the points pointers, you get the horse off the flat. We've got a couple of them mm. to talk about mm. as well. Basically, as far as you're concerned, it doesn't matter what mould they come in. If they can win races for you and get to a level, you're happy, right? Well, that's it. You know, you there's you they come in all shapes and sizes, and um, you know, you've got to get the best out of each of every individual horse. You got whatever level or whatever discipline they want. Ultimately, I yeah, I love buying big, strong chasing types that'll make a three mile chaser, but they don't always get like that. Um, but you've just got to, you know, get to know the horses and get the best out of them. Uh Henry the second is a horse that we know plenty more about yeah. in comparison to like the points pointers, etc. Uh he was two from three in his bumpers last year. But what happened to Aintree when he was pulled up? But he, he got badly struck into going past the first bend and um lucky lucky didn't end up having a really serious injury so harry pulled him up and he had sliced it out of his hind leg all the way down lucky he never Oof. cut through his tendon luckily he was fine so excuses there he won his two races before that and he's a great example of horse as a last summer before we ran him he'd showed nothing at home and we actually took 12 four-year-olds up one day to a local point to point in the spring of last year just to give them some education and he finished 12 to 12 and whoever rode him i forget now said mm, he needs to improve and look there he is he ran in two bumpers and he won both of them and that, that's the exciting thing about young horses but he's a galloper he he he, he actually ran in the same race he'll run in the same race i think at chepstow in two weeks time that stage so made his debut over hurdles in maiden hurdle and like to think he'll end up in a chalo but he'll tell us that but he's a big scopey horse jumps well exciting novice hurdler yeah okay well what about time for a tune then because he was another one yeah. who was very successful in bumpers last year won three of them yeah. and uh looks like another smart one for the hales family which i'm sure will absolutely delight you yeah, no, he's a nice horse. I mean, he he ran, it was his fourth bumper and we ran in Newbury in the spring and ours were all running ordinary at the time. He wasn't right, but he'd had, he'd won three, won the race at Cheltenham at the Paddy Power meeting, at the open meeting. And he hadn't, they, they bought him off Mr. Eckley and he hadn't done any schooling before we bought him, unlike ours would do probably when we break him, they'd do a year of schooling before they even get in a bumper. So he wasn't ready to school over hurdles or to run over hurdles in the spring. So I just said to John, let's just leave him, do plenty of schooling, have him ready in the autumn. So he's jumping great now. He's been jumping baby fences, jumping everything. So he'll be ready to make his debut probably in two weeks time. I think he's a really nice horse. Okay, okay. A uh, tri trip for him? I mean, if you're thinking uh, he challenge. Stays on, he stayed quite well. He, uh, yeah, he's got enough speed to win over two if he jumps somewhere uh, to start with. But I ultimately think he'll get two and a half miles. Okay. Uh, Ivaldi or Ivaldi, the French yeah, uh, recruit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know very little, I'm afraid. He's had one start over in and France. And he won it Fontainebleau, spring. wasn't it? Yeah, I'd say, I don't know very little about it. I mean, uh, Joffrey <laughs> Hewitt bought him for uh, Johnny and Sammy Delahaye. Um lovely big chasing type of horse he was entered in the in the Persian war this week but two things a he wasn't quite ready and b the, he wants more cut in the ground and he is now a novice until the first of december even though he won in march because he won in march so we'll find some novice hurdles for him now get some experience and then we'll learn plenty about it but ultimately i think he's one of those he's fallen out when he goes chasing this time next year he'll be a proper horse you know you'll see when you see him on the track big scopey horse how much ability he's got who knows till he runs Okay, very much an unknown. And I yeah. presume very similar comments probably apply to Stay Away Faye, who's one of the last horse on our list for this novice hurdlers section. Again, um, a little bit similar to Hermes Allen, yeah. a point to point purchase and cost a fair few bob as well. Yeah, I mean, like all these point to pointers, they win a point to point now, they all make fortunes. Um, and yeah, he, he made plenty of money. But I always say once they're through that stable gate door, they're all worth the same. And you just crack on and you know, to, to teach them the best. He is a, an absolute mirror of Hermes Allen. He's won his point to point. Mm -hmm. going to make a stay in Chaser in time. He'd be ready to run over hurdles in probably a month's time. Tell me this, right? We've talked about horses here that have come from the point to point mm. division and from France. Obviously, Corto Star came from France, mm. Denman from point to pointing. Mm. If I had to if I had to ask you, you can only buy from one of the two options for the rest of your training career. Would you go French or would you go the point to point route? Well, if I could buy another Corto Star, I'd definitely go the French route. 
<laughs> but you know, in that day when we're buying them, they'd had four or five runs. You knew they were fairly smart. You know, they were bordering on being grade one horses. It's changed now a you, bit now. Oh, and yeah. now you end up having to buy them for the same money after they've had one run or, or even got beat in a race. And who knows down the line where the, what the form of that. And it, 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 the same probably applies to the point to points. You know, you pay plenty for them. Who knows in 12 months' time whether that form is as good as it looked at the time. So there's no real, real answer. But if I could find another quarter star or big bucks, I'd definitely go down that route. Fair, fair comment. Uh, let's rattle through a few of the juveniles, the bumper horses as well. Again, list of five or six, yeah. but loads to, I mean, you know, you can have a yard full. So this mm. is just a few names that have been pulled out. Uh, the first one, Blue King Do- Do- Doro. Blue King Daru, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, he's a winner in France and then he had place for him at Otoy. So he's had three runs over hurdles. I, mean, I actually was thinking, wonder what his handicap mark would be because he's had three runs, he's eligible to get a mark and sometimes three-year-olds get a good allowance in, in those some of those good hurdle races and he's quite streetwise horse. Um, not the biggest in the world, but he's handy. He was in at Chepstow on Saturday, but because of the ground, no rain, we, we decided to wait for him. Um, nice type of horse again. You know, he's done everything at home, but I won't have a clue really till he's run what, what level we've got, you know. So it'll be very interesting on his first run, but he's quite streetwise, jumps well, and I'd say he'd stay very well. Okay, sounds positive for him. Um, Affidil is the next on the list. And now when I was doing my research for this, Paul, mm. I typed his name into the Racing Post and I thought, well, that can't be right. You know, that that can't be right because it's an Aga Khan. Mm. I mean, the result I got off anyway is this horse who's finished second on debut, well-bred Aga Khan three-year-old. I thought, surely not. But mm. I looked and he was a sales purchase for mm. 250000 at the French sales. Uh, very, in- I thought it was very interesting. Please expand. Yeah, and he was a winner as well. He he, he He's a nice, strong type of horse. Um he just took a little while to acclimatise to us and he'd been running on the flat. So we've given him a break. He's going back in work. And the idea is to get, like, if I go back to Zarkanda, Zarkanda was an Aga Khan horse as well who had similar sort of profile when we bought him. And he never actually ran until the Adonis, which he won in the spring. So we would give him plenty of time. Um, lovely, big, strong horse. Got to get him jumping. Who knows? You know, he's just got the right profile. Everybody liked him at the sale. It wasn't just us, and we had to give plenty for him. But, you know, he, he's a nice horse, but I haven't done enough with him yet to see where we are. Okay. Uh, Dixon Cove, a filly, a juvenile hurdler from France as well. Yeah. She had a bit of form. She's a nice filly, actually. Big, strong filly. She's had three runs in Otoy. I think it's placed every time. I think, I'm right in saying, and Tom Malone, too, she's got a mark of 128. So if she's okay. 128, he's a juvenile after three runs. That's quite a good level of form. Um and over here, she can run in the Phillies races. I've actually got my honour, Phillies juvenile hurdle at Aintree early December, and we'll find a run somewhere for her beforehand. And I'd say £7 off the Geldens would make her quite interesting in a juvenile hurdle. Very nice filly. Mm. She sounds, yeah, that's a very positive yeah. little update on yeah. Dixon Cove. Uh, Hurricane Danny, another name on the list here. Hurricane Danny. Well, actually, Hurricane Danny, he, he should be in the bumper list, actually. he He's just a nice horse. Uh, but as I said earlier, we've got, I reckon there's probably, I think there's 40 horses we've got, if we include the point-to-point winners and they're eligible to run in bumpers at some stage. And there's probably 25, 26, what I call it, we bought last year as three-year-old stores that have come through us, yeah, have a year where we're bidding and then come to me on the 1st of July. Um, and Hurricane Danny is just a nice big horse by no risk at all that goes nicely at home. We'll be making his debut shortly in a bumper. But he he's just one of a number of horses. I could pick out any number. As I said, you don't really know what you got with those bumper horses until they run. Okay, well, in, there's a couple of other sort of names yeah. we could rattle through, but just in terms of, he sounds like he was put on the list as one that's Yeah, sort and there's of a couple semi- of other bumper horses I just put down. Pentar Head's a nice horse by presenting from a good family. He runs at Chepstow on Saturday in, right. the, in the bumper, belonged to Mr. Barber, and a nice Shantou horse, I like Shantou, called Fireflyer. He goes very nicely at home, good family. He will run at Ascot, I think, at the end of the end of October. Uh, there's a horse called Isaac Desabo. I didn't put him on. I don't know why he didn't get on the list. He's a three parts brother to Clan Desabo, big four year old. He again, he he'll he'll have a run in a bumper. So there's a sort of conveyor belt of those type of horses to run, and hopefully will be the future. Brilliant. Well, it's been you know it's. it's really gets us in the mood talking about not only the bigger names, but obviously some complete unknowns that are coming through as we've touched upon there. And it sounds like you've got very exciting new recruits, Paul. Um, Just last question, just because you mentioned Mm. it there. Do you say that the sort of stores is the three coming four horses are with um, someone else until sort of the summer and then they come to you sort of mid-summer? Is that right? Well, so what we normally do, we buy the three-year-old during the summer, 
uh, Will Biddick, he's got a what we call a satellite yard or whatever. He's right next to us. So he breaks them all in. He's very, very good at doing that. He breaks them all in. They have a month out, six weeks out of grass and come in. I think they're all due to come back in next week. Unless the weather looked really good, they might have another week. Then Will has them all through the winter, pre-trains mm-hmm. them, teaches them their job and get some jumping. So using our facilities, and so they know what they're doing. And then we usually, then what I say, have them in the top yard, the main yard for one month in April when we're finishing off, just to give them what I call it a month in big boy school. So they know ah. what they're at. And then they come into us on the 1st of July in full training. Oh, I so, see. That's so they're all gone through that system. So, so most of those three-year-olds I bought this year, I bought 16 this year, I'd say that very few of those will run until next autumn. Yeah, but they'll have had a year's education before they do run, and it just gives them time. Oh, it's so interesting. It really does expand on the point mm-hmm. that you know the jumping game really is. You've got to be in it for the long haul because you know yeah. if you're an owner connected to one of those horses, could be yeah, you know, it's a fair while until you see them doing anything exciting. Yeah, I guess. So, so what I try and do with most of those people is, let's say a horse costs a hundred grand, you, you say well, you work out a figure and say. That's what it's going to cost you. I won't send you another bill till the 1st of July next year. So they bought the horse. He's been paid for training. They don't get a bill every month saying to me, when's he going to win? When's he going to run? You explained up front that they're going to have that year in pre-training and they're coming to run next autumn. So that suits everybody. And um, it's just a good way forward, I think. And give, it basically gives horses time. Yeah, it gives the horses time. Owners know where they're at. And then yeah. on top of that, you know, you being able to trust the Will Biddick, who's right, like you say, next door to you, using yeah. the same roads, same facilities. You know, it's just, I can see how that's such a sort of perfect conveyor belt to get them to, when you have them in, you can hopefully, fingers crossed, kick on with them, which yeah. is what you're going to be doing with a few yeah. of these. And then stage time at Fabulous and Rillo, horse after horse, have all gone through that system. And like Henry II this time last year hadn't run. He'd just been with Will the year before, and then he went and won his two bumpers. And you know, there's loads like that. And it, it just works nicely for us. Brilliant. Well, look, before we wrap up then, because I think that's about the end of the show and we could talk all day, like you say, 100 and whatever horses in. Uh, there's plenty of names to get through, but we won't keep you that long. But just before we do go, uh, the final question is, if you could only run one horse this season that's not one of the big names, who would you pick? Now, I know that's a very tough one, but apparently you were asked the same question this time last year. So I'm trusting that you're going to give us a good answer here, Paul. Um do you know what? I got a lovely young horse that I really like called Captain T. He's by Doyen. Johnny Sam owned him. He won his only point to point last year, really impressively. Uh, I just love him as an individual. So he'll probably start in a bumper, may stay in a couple of bumpers this year and keep him as a novice next year. He may go over. But for some reason, I just like him as a model and everything he does. How good he is, I couldn't tell at the moment, but he's just a horse I really like. Captain T. Brilliant. Captain Teague, it is to wrap up the show then. Look, Paul, thank you very much, as always, for your time. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to get to talk to you. And uh, best of luck for the forthcoming season. I'm sure we will be catching up with you plenty. I'm sure I'll see you around and about plenty as well. Uh, Here's to another Trainers' Championship, hey? Yeah, thank you much. Well, we'll try hard and, uh, yeah, look forward to the, you know, successful season. And uh, let's hope it gets off to a good start this weekend. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Paul. Okay.